Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in YouTube is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is This Week in YouTube, Episode 8, recorded June 2nd, 2013. Tay Zonde. It's time for This Week in YouTube, the show where we talk about the latest and greatest from YouTube, the hottest videos, YouTube suggestions, good channels, and we interview YouTube greats. Joining me right now, our host, Mr. Lamar Wilson, who is himself a YouTuber. Hello, Lamar. Hey, Leo. How are you today? And a nationally ranked chess player. <laughs> From many, many years ago. That's great. You and I, yeah. we're going to play some. I had no idea. I love chess. Yes, I am extremely rusty, so I will um, yeah, I'm that's... probably play at a 1,200 level right now. So I'm, <laughs> All I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to need to strengthen up a little bit. I was telling you uh, before the show, uh, chess.com is a great website. I joined it, and uh, you can play masters and people all over the world, and it's yeah. so much I fun. Used to, I used to travel uh, to different tournaments like yeah, around the country. me too. Yeah. It was yeah. fun. Wow. Uh, my, after I, my, uh, the day before my first wedding, I played in the U.S. Open, but that was a mistake. I wasn't really oh. focused. The day well, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't really focused. Also here, Chad Johnson of the Red Head. Yeah, it's a nation. Um, we, uh, we're a sovereign nation of the Red Head Nation. That's yeah. a good nation to be a mm -hmm. red. What happens, though, if your hair goes other colors? Do you, like you gray. boot it out. Your visa really? it just expires, yeah. I'm in the gray-haired nation, yeah. and I never have is, to worry is, about that. Is, is, Doctor, is Doctor Doom your sovereign lord? Uh, right. It's like, right. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very <laughs> posh um, echelon of folks who, <laughs> who uh, can sport the red hair, yeah. And then also Clifford, the big red dog. He, he hangs around all the time. <laughs> oh, no, oh yeah. Chaddington, the big red dog. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and we, we really enjoy our corporate sponsorships. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Many people think of him as Wendell, Wendy's evil brother. Window, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, we have a great guest on the show today, and we're so glad to have him. Why don't you introduce him, Lamar? Because he's a friend of yours, I understand. A, a friend of mine, a longtime YouTuber, uh, one of my best friends. He is so knowledgeable about YouTube, uh, viral hit. But sustaining person on YouTube like to represent Mr. Tay Zonde. Oh my hey. God! I'm so happy doing? to meet you, Tay. Thank you so much for having me. Huge fan. Many people remember his uh, charting hit, "Chocolate Rain." It was it was kind of a first in it in uh, that it was a semi professional experience that you saw just explode. I mean, I remember in like hanging out with my friends and was just like, "Have you seen this video?" of yeah. this guy singing like it's amazing well, I mean, and and there were uh, there was other stuff exploding on youtube at the time soldier boy kind of had his crank that song a month later chris crocker had the leave britney alone oh, yeah. uh chocolate rain was kind of the clean marketable thing <laughs> right britney viral. alone <laughs> really <laughs> chocolate really. rain and leave britney alone are at the same yeah uh, wow oh, i yeah, remember about 2007. The same time. Yeah. i remember watching a fox news broadcast uh that tay was actually on with Oh, you remember that? Is that the one where they with played? With Dan Brown. Dan Brown. And they played, <laughs> they played uh, Leave Britney Alone with there's an F-bomb in it, and they didn't censor it. And they went, ooh, oh, sorry about that. And, yeah, definitely part of the time. That <laughs> no F-bombs in. in Chocolate Rain. Actually, Chocolate Rain was uh, a, a, you know, a political song. It was, a, it was an activist song. I don't know how many people really knew that. Um, no, I mean, a lot of people will just say, hey, you know, it's a catchy beat. My two-year-old can't stop singing it at bedtime. I couldn't uh, stop singing it, Tay. Uh, people were getting <laughs> mad at me. Oh. Because I'd come in, I'd go, chocolate rain, some stray dry while others feel the pain. That's all anybody yeah. knows, by the way. That's yeah, well, why I they mean, don't know what it's about. I'll be, I'll be spotted just like at the mall now, and people be like, chocolate rain. They don't even remember the lyrics. Or <laughs> right. Or <my> right. <laughs> right. It's just kind of uh, I, I, iconic. I was, Oh, go ahead. No, go talk about the phone. I'll come back. Go ahead. Oh, no, you were going to go. Oh, we, are we going to do this? <laughs> Don't be polite. <laughs> Would you guys one. stop it? Just not going to. All right, I'm going to ask a question. Tay, what, so what, what's the genesis? Was that your first? That wasn't your first YouTube video, or was it? It was not my first YouTube video. Um, uh, I had been singing and playing at open mics in Minneapolis, where I lived at the time. Uh, YouTube was much more convenient. Uh, I actually liked that you got honest feedback posting music on YouTube, which you usually don't get at open mics and small cafes. 
Uh, and I uploaded Chocolate Rain in April of 2007. Didn't go viral right away. Um, and then that summer, someone posted it on dig.com. That dates it. Uh, someone saw it on Dig, posted it on 4chan, and it kind of blew up from there. And, uh, you know, I, it was really kind of the first incident where someone did something on the internet and then got mainstream media attention. Since then, there's been Antoine Dodson, there's been Rebecca oh, there's Black, tons. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all these other examples. But when it happened to me, there were really no breadcrumbs to follow. I couldn't be like, oh, you know, what did so-and-so do when this happened to them? So it was kind of this new experience to have a video on the internet and then, whoa, I'm on Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, well, you know, I'm opening for Girl Talk at, at one of their shows. And um, it was just a, a, a very exciting time. I, I mean, would like to think that there's an alternate universe out there where um, the open Chocolate mic Rain nights, is playing all the time. Right, no, no, where the oh, open God. mic nights became the viral hit, and then you just have these coffee shops that are just filled with people trying Wouldn't to see nice? Hey Zonde sing. Yeah. Um, so, so there were really no rules when all of this happened. How did you kind of deal, like, what was the progression of trying to figure out how to manage this sort of celebrity that was forced upon you? Um, it was weird because really I was very much a nerd making music as a hobby in my living room. And all of a sudden, you know, there's this inundation of people wanting me to sing at their kids' bar mitzvahs, sing at their corporate parties, sing at their weddings, uh, you know, perform live, open for the products, meet with all different types of literary agents. And anyone connected with entertainment, there's just this huge um, uh, gold rush when someone is perceived to be going viral. And... Um, I didn't feel ready to be more than a nerd making music in my living room as a hobby, uh, no matter how much there might have been an opportunity to become Akon or, or you know, perhaps a more seasoned performer. That's not where I was in my art. And I still knew that I needed time to grow and develop and figure out who I wanted to be as an artist. So that was the tension is everyone's telling me, hey, strike while the iron is hot. Uh, three of the four major labels at the time wanted to sign me. And it was kind of this thing where I had to say, hey, um, I'm going to stick with this YouTube thing and maybe take opportunities as they come. But I still need to grow and develop as an artist. And wow, that's brave. I, that's really I, brave. You didn't you turn down record labels? Uh, yeah, there, there was definitely interest in, in signing me and, and kind of this idea of striking while the iron is hot. Right. Of, you know, getting something out there while my name is out there and and whatnot. And I really had to. I was also in graduate school at the time, too. What were you studying? And, and, uh, I was the, in the third year of the doctorate program in American Studies wow. at the University of Minnesota. That's kind of as broad as it sounds, but it's uh, pretty much history. I was studying the history of theater and social change. Wow. So this was happening in the middle of my still being committed to being in grad school, now, and I didn't just want to drop out. Uh, so I basically decided to keep putting videos on YouTube and, and take opportunities as they came. But... Um, you know, not give up my life as an academic right away. Eventually, uh, I, I finished with a master's degree and moved to L.A. and pursued entertainment full time. But I wasn't really ready to do that right in 2007. Mm -hmm. Did you, do you feel that the uh, your decision to kind of not deal with the labels was a sound one? Because you, do you feel like they would have just put you on a shelf or, or, or kept you? Oh, you, oh definitely. I mean, you yeah. can look at so many YouTube artists, uh, Tara Naomi is a fabulous example, amazingly talented singer who I think she blew up with her song, Say It's Possible, on YouTube in 2006, one of the first artists to blow up. And she was signed by a major label, I believe, in 2006. Um, and it, you know, it just wasn't a positive experience for her uh, to move in that direction. And uh, mm -hmm. so I think I made the right choice for me because I also feel like as I've continued to upload uh, videos to YouTube and as luckily there's still been an audience there for them on YouTube, I've grown and changed tremendously as an artist. So YouTube has been a great place to to do that. Yeah, I, I got to say, one of the things I've always admired about you is that you have a longevity. You know, there there are some people who are viral hits that are one-offs and you don't hear from them anymore. And and you 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 stayed around and I know people only know you as Chocolate Rain, but you've done so much more since two thousand seven. Like, can you give us some examples of of that? Oh, or, I mean, I mean people why? stop me from this stuff sometimes. They, they like, oh, the, uh, you're you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. I get that one. Uh, <laughs> no, it's and, and even the songs that I I put up that I don't think anyone watches them. Everyone hates them. Uh, I'll set it to private, and there's always a couple of people coming out of the woodwork who're like, "Gosh, uh, you know, Chasing Eden. That's my favorite song. What did you do with that?" So 
you know, there's um, the audience is is complicated in that way. And <laughs> it's I feel very lucky to have Chocolate Rain as kind of the calling card that the most people are, are familiar with. But uh, people are, are fans of all sorts of things that I do. How much money did you make on Chocolate Rain? Uh, no. That's a good question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good I don't good know answer. if I'm going to answer that. Well, yeah, um, I, you I mean, don't have to. It's not. It's none of my business. You have ninety-one, no, no, I mean, ninety-one I mean, million views. Um, did they? Did they monetize? Did you adver put advertising on it right away? Did they even do that in those days? Uh, the YouTube Partner Program started, I believe, around uh, when I entered it. It was November of two thousand seven. So, and and at that time, it was very exclusive. Uh, over the years, it became less and less exclusive, and eventually, YouTube got out of the business of managing partners entirely. So. Now I think anyone can actually put ads on their YouTube video, and right. then talent management has not been outsourced to networks. So, um, okay, let's see if I can narrow it down. You, you still make money from it? Uh, I do. Um, you know, I, I would enough say, to I, live on. I would say that between YouTube and opportunities that have emerged from YouTube, uh, I am able to live fairly comfortably. Uh, you know, and. Hey, I mean, as long as you're able to wake up every day and do what you love, uh, I call that success. Well, and that's the reason I ask. I don't really, I'm not interested in your particular financial situation, but I am interested in, for others who are watching, if this is a worthwhile pursuit, if it's a hobby or if it's a career, if there's money in it or if it's just something you do for fun. Um, I would say it's a hobby that can become a career. And that's the great thing about YouTube is you never really know. Um, sometimes you find an audience accidentally and then that becomes a new direction for your life and, and can be a, a changing experience. Um, so I think it's, it's like many other things in life. If it grows to that scale, then sure, you can make a living off of it. Right. Are you, are you looking to do any like other type of voice work? Uh, obviously, I know people tell you, oh, you should, you should do movie trailers. You should do this. But what, what are you hey, looking if, to do? Uh, I'd love to do. I'm pursuing voice work. I'm pursuing acting, film work. What's interesting is that as I've been in L.A. almost five years now, what it means to pursue on camera work and voice work and what have you is changing very quickly because of YouTube, because of all the venture capital and YouTube networks and and kind of this digital media remaking uh, Hollywood. Uh, what it means to pursue an, a career in film or television is still ch is still changing. Well, a lot of the people that watch the show are probably kind of aspiring creators. Um, and I wanted to ask, there seems to almost be two ways to tackle YouTube as a career to try to try to make money. And that is one to upload con consistently and sort of grow your audience um, over time or sort of what you did where you broke in. It was a super viral hit. And I see a lot of people um, trying to only get that viral sensation so you know um uh i don't even know what the question is i i guess i'm just no, I, I think i understand the question i mean right. i think your question is um there's this sense um and really this is the sense of social media now of anything that you know you don't exist unless you are on google unless you have your seo unless someone puts in your name and finds you on on linkedin and twitter and facebook and 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 google plus and youtube and and all these other places. And so um, I, I guess the question would be um, uh, the volume of content is also this sense that you have to have a transparent life and always be tweeting, always be putting stuff on Instagram, always be interacting with your fans and kind of um, find a way to build an audience through volume. Or, you know, there's kind of that alternative, which, uh, you know, maybe um, – Maybe Zay Frank is an example. I mean, of course, he's he's you know, legendary, but you know, he I, I'm not sure that he's like doing daily vlogs. He's doing specific weekly videos, and and they often become viral. And so, do you do kind of try and create a series of one hit wonders, or do you right. really try and just pound away at it every day and do the daily that's, vlog? That's and it. and um, uh, I don't know. I I would say the former. Um, I got has worked for me trying to do the quality over quantity. Right. Um, and uh, if what you are doing is high quality and, and distinct enough, then it has a potential to be viral and, and take off on its own. Um, so that's the strategy that works for me. Um, and I guess you have to kind of figure out what works for you. Yeah, I think it's a personal, personal choice based on kind of who you are. Are you someone who, who 
Yeah, I mean, there's almost like the cult of personality versus yeah. the the creative, you know, side of things. Yeah, and good. Yeah, good so, point. So, 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 Tate, um, what do you? What, how do you deal with the incredible? I mean, my God, you've been around since uh, 07. What do you? How do you deal with the constant YouTube changes? I mean, now uh, the views you may have gotten a few years ago are now kind of taken by all the eyeballs, and the sa same thing happens to all of us because Google is de-emphasizing search. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it's, that's weird, right? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it, it, it is. I mean, they, they, Google is really trying to simplify discovery on YouTube. So it becomes more like television and and trying to automate that process. And in, in that process, uh, a lot of legacy talents are kind of becoming downranked and not as easy to discover and not as easy to syndicate your content to your audience. Um, and. Uh, you know, I still think that there are certainly ways for videos to go viral, you know, with Reddit and 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 just getting it out there in, in the press. But it is harder to build an audience on YouTube now um, because you'll see great stuff that just uh, it's not able to get outside of that circle of your your mom and your friends and, and whoever you're able to, to email it to uh, and grow in the way that perhaps it was in 2008, 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. And um I don't know what the answer to that is. I'd, I'd, I'd like to uh, uh, hear more of an answer about audience growth and, and really building an audience um, from the platform itself, from YouTube, and what their viewpoint is on that. Because there are a lot of people struggling. Yeah, and there's, I mean, there's a person who's just, uh, here, let me let me find who said this. Um, Young Geek one says, being a teen, I'm late to the YouTube scene. Uh, I think you cannot become big anymore, uh, only stay as small as, as a small YouTuber. Only music videos are going viral these days. And there's kind of a, a sense that, hey, if if you're expecting to try to make a career in YouTube now, it's so difficult to be discovered, not only just by the amount of volume of YouTube mm -hmm. videos, but the the algorithm, now the way that YouTube is set up. And it's very discouraging for people, um, I would say. And I mean, do you have any tips for, for someone who is breaking into this space now? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that people still, I mean, this is very cliche, but people still go for authenticity. And, you know, when you are building a YouTube channel, when you're building any brand, you are ultimately kind of trying to build, um, it's an odd way to put it, but, you know, kind of a church of you, a, a, a temple or a space where your brand and your authenticity and who you authentically are can thrive and um the people who do blow up on youtube because there are still you know you still see if you look at vid stats x or whatnot it, it does still happen it's rarer it's more exceptional but there are still channels blowing up and um oftentimes that to me really seems to be tied to authenticity um people who come across as very authentic and um the other thing i'll say about youtube success is um and lamar will probably agree with me being in la is that you meet successful people or people who are successful on youtube like jenna marbles or Ray william johnson and whatnot in person and what they do on youtube it's not an act it is actually who they are right um and you know so it's not like they turn the camera on and become something else they turn the camera on and uh that's a piece of them going out on the internet yeah they're and documenting their life yeah, and so YouTube is necessarily documentary. Uh, I would say that every success story on YouTube is pretty much not someone trying to create an act or a shtick or something different than how they would live their lives every day, but finding how to make the way they live their lives every day interesting and share that with other people. Very good. I think this is a good transition into uh, the, our first article that was really talking about this chart that Tube Filter came up with. It's a very unique chart. We, we, we know about the top 100 on YouTube as far as channels and, you know, Smosh and, and Jenna Marbles. And, but this this chart from Tube Filter really shows um, the top 50 most viewed YouTube channels. And they're going to do this on a weekly basis. And I just kind of want, want to get your, your feedback on, on some of these channels because a, a lot of them are either music or they're gaming. And and I, I, I know you're really kind of into that gaming aspect you, you know pewdiepie and things like that so talk about how gaming has become th this top thing is is it because the person is real and is talking to, to the audience and and relating with them is, is that what's making it so great 
Um, yeah, I mean, I if you look at someone like I me, mean, Toby Turner, Toby Games is, is yeah, a perfect definitely. example of, uh, you know, Toby is just, he has this amazing brain, this amazing ability to create interesting high energy content for hours on end. I mean, if I tried to be Toby Turner, I'd wear myself out after about five minutes. But, you know, <laughs> he's able to uh, do that. You know, it, it's almost, it, it's an interesting testimony that people find watching video game walkthroughs sometimes more interesting than playing the actual games. And um, I think that's a good question. What is that um, sense of being a captive audience to someone else experiencing something that, you know, you find a vicarious uh, uh, joy in that, perhaps more than doing it yourself? And I don't know, I mean, I would most compare it uh, to, you know, you know PewDiePie and, and these video game channels blowing up to when I was a kid, you know, my brother is six years older than me. So I would always, when I was like eight years old, watch my brother and his friends uh, playing video games. And it was kind of like this experience with like, it made me feel older. It made me feel cool. I would just love sitting there in the dark, watching my older brother and his friends play video games for hours on end. And that's almost kind of what's happening with these YouTube channels with Toby Games and, and, and PewDiePie, where it's, where it's almost like, I, I feel like there are these younger kids and it's like watching their older sibling play video games. It's that sense of cool, that sense of feeling a cool, relatable personality. Um, perhaps for kids or audience members who might not have that in their actual lives, you can go on YouTube and uh, experience that. Never would have thought about it like that. That is <laughs> that is pretty amazing. Um, like, what, what, what do you what do you think uh, accounts for so many music channels? I mean, I think I know, we know what's, it's obvious. It's the celebrity. Mm -hmm. but, but, but but what is your take? You have size still it, number is, one. Is it, is it Google feeding them subscribers? Yeah, okay, uh, that's pretty much where I'm trying to get That for it. some of them, but... Uh, <laughs> um, well, I mean, you, I mean, of course you had Vavo, and and, and at, at one point, I think when Vavo split off somewhere in 2000, uh, 8, 2009, Vavo, for I guess those who don't know, is was the uh, YouTube for music labels, uh, that, that split off. And at some point it was a pretty big portion of YouTube's monetized traffic. I think more than half, uh, around, you know, 2010 or so. And, uh, uh I don't know. I mean, it's, um, music, I guess, is kind of that I I example of, uh, you know, maybe this is debatable that I'm going to get in trouble saying this, but quality over quantity, but it is definitely more, um, specific videos going viral and getting tens and perhaps hundreds of millions of views uh, mm -hmm. versus doing the daily vlog like Shea Chrome. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. Oh. And if it's funny because if I look at this list, um, there's a lot of people who are uh, associated with a network. I mean, looking at the top ones, um, Psy is a network, um, uh, you know, PewDiePie is in a network, Ellen, Sky does Minecraft, and you can see some... I mean, do you think that signing to a network is kind of a requirement to be in the top? And this is a question for, for everyone in the top, you know, 50. I mean, there's only very few that are not. And they're huge companies like BuzzFeed or uh, there's uh, the BBC and things like that that aren't in a network. Uh, I, I think it helps to have a library and an archive, honestly, because those are the top 50 viewed, aren't they? Not the top 50 subscribed. Right. Uh, so there, there's in that the, that particular list the implication that there might be an access to a high quantity of videos. Where if you are a company and okay, you have eighty, a hundred thousand videos in your archives, and you know you pay someone to upload them and have reasonable SEO, uh, you know, getting on the top viewed channel list is not necessarily a metric of user engagement. Uh, so much as, you know, how big your library is and how good your SEO is if you have these assets that you're just transferring to YouTube. So I'm not sure what this particular list does to indicate current user engagement uh, in that regard. Also, does it, does top view channel mean maybe that they're also one of the ones that aren't subscribed to enough? Because if you're getting views on the channel, that means yeah. that they're probably haven't subscribed. Well, I mean, and then also the subscribe feature is a little bit broken, but... Mm. That means you're going to the actual channel page to view what's happening on the channel. Yeah. That and, means that videos are being viewed, but Jenna Marbles has more subscribers. Right. Smosh has more subscribers. Uh, right. And and th those subscribers, I mean, Smosh, Smosh has, you know, six, seven-year-old subscribers that probably aren't around anymore. 
Oh, ooh, that's not a morbid. I don't. Did right. that come <laughs> I mean, they're they probably. Now? Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah, most YouTubers. I mean, they only come last on. a few years. Yeah. What's, uh, what, what's interesting about Smosh sure. is that they're, they're really only getting, they're getting around the same percentage as an average. You twenty to forty percent max of their subscribers are watching. Usually around 20, 25 percent. Smosh's success has always been in their blog or getting it viral and embedded. Right. on other yeah, on other places much. that that's where these views are really coming from that uh, ellen show does come from youtube but it, it comes from right em embeddable content right. in, and in that's so many different places yeah yeah that, that that's natural because of the way that sketch comedy works is you see something mm -hmm. that's funny and then you share it um, yeah absolutely absolutely when you want to get a tremendous website presence so yeah they do that they, they've spread along a lot of top youtubers actually putting their audiences on a separate website that you know is all in its own right, a successful social network. Right, yeah. right, with their own email list and, and things like yeah. that. To yeah, well, that's, that's always something I think Twit uh, and Leo has said, you know, you, sh you should always try to have your audience in one location, um, uh, you know, where where they could be transportable. The, the worst thing you do is rely 100% on YouTube and make that your base because, you know, what what what, what happens if, if you, you know, want to move to some, something else or YouTube goes down and gets stuck and you can't, communicate with your audience is much better to have your own site you know that's why you know he encouraged me to make one and that's why i did uh for that reason you know you don't want to you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket definitely not in youtube's basket mm -hmm. well let's, now, what do you think about uh, phil defranco selling everything to revision three slash discovery what is that all about it's definitely putting your eggs in one basket. <laughs> uh yeah that's quite the opposite isn't it i mean yeah it um it looks like it, you it, know what happened? They gave him a pile of money. Oh, most likely. Oh, and he oh. said, fine, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He, whatever. So not not only his his Sexy Phil channel, but SourceFed and his vlog channel. And I think he has a, a, a movie or games channel. Uh, anything he, he owns, basically. And, and in exchange, he's a pretty much a VP of Discovery Communications and, and, and you know, vice president of his own yeah. network. I, I, you know, I want to ask Tay about this because... I, this is a trend, and, and the other story is really about you know Smosh getting into TV, and we know we heard about uh -huh. Ray William Johnson doing TV. Uh -huh. and, and, and you see these YouTubers who have a certain time limit on YouTube. You know, you think about music, uh, uh, you know, people who who sing, and they sing for a while, then they become producers, and then they kind of go in the background yeah. and they and they do uh -huh. amazing work. Do you see this trend happening on YouTube where the, where the they're just kind of starting to shift away? That they see yeah. maybe a downturn, we're, we're, and they see is. Yeah, you know what I'm asking. I yeah, I mean, with, with someone who who has a successful career on YouTube, the channel peaks. What's the next step? How do you get into administration or owning a company? Right. What's the step after that? Um, I mean, Phil DeFranco. If you think about it, it's an he's an amazing story. Um, you know, think of all the people Phil DeFranco's age who you know got into debt for college, got into debt for you know graduate school, getting an MBA. You know, paying student loans for 15, 20 years, and and are still today unemployed or struggling to find work. And Phil, I, I watched his Draw My Life video, drops out of college. Right. <laughs> says he's going to do YouTube full time. Needs $500 uh, and, just and, to get back home. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Phil, Phil had a, has a story if you haven't watched his Draw My Life. But, uh, you know, and now he's an executive <laughs> with Discovery. And, you know, uh, it, it really means that, you know, content is the new college. You know, instead of the undergrad degree and the MBA, he made content on YouTube and that content became what separated him from all the MBAs, from all the people with the great LinkedIn connections and whatnot. He said, hey, I have a brand, I have multiple brands, I've built traffic, I've built an audience, uh, you know, actually doing uh, the work of building that audience zoomed him past all these other people. So I think that kind of goes into the earlier question of, of can YouTube become something? Um, is YouTube something that can lead to success? Well. Uh, Phil DeFranco is an amazing story. Right. Yeah. He learned under fire. And then and on top of that, I don't know if Phil, if Phil really ever had a super viral hit like we were talking about earlier. He just constantly made content all the yep. time and rose up the ranks. And some yeah. of it was very, very honest content in terms of like not necessarily being PG rated. Right. Uh, so, I mean, Phil has always <laughs> been, been a very frank uh, vlogger. So I think it also shows that you can have a little bit of honesty uh, be a little bit surly, but if the numbers are there, uh, you can develop other brands and 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 take it to another level. 
Yeah, that's one. That's one of the things with news. News is very one-off, and it, you know, no one knows that better than than the Twit Network. You know, you you have your news thing, and then it's no one's gonna watch it six months from now. But but uh, Phil didn't care about that. He he just he he grinded them out. You know, day after day, week after week, and that's a good model uh, to to think about. Just being a YouTuber, do you go for you know? Is my content going to be viable in a year? Which is kind of the direction I'm looking at as I get older. Or, that's a great or, way. Do, you, or do you just do one-offs and and maybe one or two will hit and you're and you're satisfied with that? Right. You know, there's two school of thoughts for that. Right. Yeah. And he's keeping it. He's keeping it local. Still here on the internet. It, it, I, he's been bought by a big company, but he's still with Revision Three. Now, then there was a story about Smosh maybe doing mm -hmm. the opposite and heading in the television direction. Uh, reported on by uh, Variety and uh, Alloy Digital that they may be cutting a deal uh, to, uh, to to do something with television, um, which seems interesting. Now, now I'm, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask, I'm going to be the controversial one because Tay is friends with them. I am not, so I can ask this. Uh, <laughs> it, I mean, I, mean I, I know them, but I, we're not yeah, close friends. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm wondering, can, can their type of funny be funny on on TV, you know, I that, I, I, a, I saw I saw them at the question. comedy I saw them at the comedy show thing. What was the thing they, they did on the comedy they show? They they did a thirty second blip that wasn't funny at all. It, it mm. was they were reading from oh, a teleprompter, oh, 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 a couple drama. jokes. So is the story yeah. is the story that they are seeking or that they are talking? Because if it's they're seeking, yeah, sure, well, so am I. But if it's their <laughs> if if it's their talk, if there's somebody actually talking, it's I think you're going to see over the next couple of years, you're going to see television. Talk to a lot of people like Phil DeFranco. I mean, remember Discovery, Revision 3 is really Discovery, and Discovery really is TV. You're going to see a lot of TV companies desperate trying to figure out what the hell's going on over on YouTube well, and why can't awesome we get 18 TV. to 24-year-olds watching TV. Yeah. So you're going to see, like, you know, like Annoying Orange and Fred Figglesworth, you're going to see more of that. <laughs> it's not going to work necessarily. Uh, TV doesn't really understand any of this. Frankly, I don't feel like I understand what makes it something work on YouTube or not. It seems completely a crapshoot to me. Well, there, no, there, I, I there's think no the, method. Well, I think the predictability, though, is that, and Google doesn't always want to admit this, because Google wants to sell YouTube as something where you can effectively advertise to every age range, you know, 40, 50, 60 year olds. But in terms of eyeball time, it's the kids. views on YouTube are still very, very kids. young. But that's you what know? you, well, yeah. not every advertiser, Cadillac and you know, Mercedes don't care, but a lot most advertisers are finding it's very hard to reach the 18 to 24 year old, and that's yeah. the presumption is that's because they're watching YouTube, yeah. and if we can only somehow capture some of that gold, uh, yeah. we I, I, we would I, do it. I saw a I saw a really controversial video yesterday that was it was called Why YouTube Sucks. It was by Steve Green Comedy. Um, he it was, he was being honest, but one of the things he mentioned is that people like Smosh or even you know myself or anybody who does con content like this we're we're children's entertainers and he said that he said people adults who are in the lewis ck and and i can assure you that's what that's what's worried you yeah. worries youtube Ex absolutely uh -huh. we're, we're we're not are we marketable to an older audience or are we just catering to kids and it's yeah. really something that they, it made me really open my eyes and say hey you know, I just came from teaching, and now I'm entertaining kids on uh, on YouTube. Uh -huh. and, and you can't you can't rely on the, on analytics. These kids lie and say, "Yeah, I'm 50." They're, they're 12. <laughs> they're, 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 it's a, it's yeah. a lot of kids <laughs> watching us. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, let me just watch some Smosh because I haven't seen any Smosh. Now, would you say this is aimed at adults or no, children? Children. Uh, yeah, if you look at the type of humor, there's a lot of. Uh, well, first of all, I find it interesting that AT and T has a 30 second ad. Right up front. With children. Uh, yeah, but it's aimed at iPhone buyers, which is really not 18 to 24 year I'm olds. I'm not getting your audio. I know. I'm hearing it. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll make it route out to it. Sure. But, but let's see if I can skip. No, I, and this is on Smosh's webpage. This is not on YouTube. So that's interesting. Smosh they is selling these ads direct, and oh, yeah, they're, they're not letting you skip the ad at all. Right. Because they, they know people are going to watch it. They can get away with it. Right. Is that a second ad? I'm sick of it already. Let's go somewhere uh, else. No, no, no. no. <laughs> All right. Dan, you're not getting my audio, so I don't care anywhere. Yeah. But this is obviously not aimed at an adult. No, no, no. I mean, in, well, maybe in, she was. Um, perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> smush. Um, yeah, I mean, it, absolutely. This is this content is made for middle schoolers, and, and the comedy still appeals to most people because it's comedy. So you're going to get sort of that lowbrow, like, hey, this, you know, 
Reminds me of duty. Ha ha ha. Well, it's interesting that Fred Figglesworth uh, and Annoying Orange are arguably the two big right. mainstream successes. Those are both uh -huh. kids' programs. The right? first time that I ever heard of Fred Figglesworth is from my 14 year old right. nephew. Well, no you know? adult okay. would watch somebody it's going. <laughs> It's it, it's Figglehorn. Figglehorn. Figgle, Figgle. I only said Figgle I want to say Figgle he did. something else. So I just I, I, I figgle, figgle that guy. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, could you see Smosh on Cartoon Network? Could you see uh, yeah. Smosh signing a deal like Annoying Orange? And um, you know, all of the it, it, it's almost kind of like at a point where the brand becomes so big that the platform is set it doesn't even matter. Brand. That's it, right. So, I mean, the goal is just to expand the brand to as many platforms as you possibly can. Yeah. But That's if right. somebody in the chat said something interesting, why, why market to, to middle schoolers who have no money uh, when you well, should they, be marketing, marketing to adults? But the same thing is, why do, we, why, why, do, why do they do it in Saturday morning cartoons? No. You know, because the kids will go bug the adults. It's... it's it's a pretty, it's right. a pretty good market to, to It's a great uh, market. market to, yeah. Yeah. Tell they, tell Disney that the yeah. young market is 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 gone <laughs> and that there isn't any money in young markets. There yeah. Is, there's money in it. If yeah. they want an iPhone or a new Android phone, they're going to get it. Right. Let's Trust check out me. some viral videos. Oh, let's. Hey. So this week we have uh, one from now. We, you mentioned last week that a lot of our viral videos are also campaigns. So I don't want to see any more. I think we should watch Samuel L. Jackson saying "mofo" a lot. No, no? I don't. Yeah. I don't think okay. so. You know, right. I actually have one that might be pretty funny. But um, well, we have a. That Windows was, by the way, that's a nice story. Raising money for Alzheimer's. He um, he asked people to donate, and he picked a winner. I think he was on Twitter to record a monologue for them. And uh, he, re he did record a monologue that said, I'm getting out of acting, and I'm going to go fight crime. I'm going to be a vigilante. <laughs> and he basically shouted a lot of stuff that old men like me shout at people when they're on their lawn. It was great. Uh, with, a, with a lot of profanity interlaced. Okay. That's great. Great video. I just described the whole thing, you, you know. Perfect. Yeah. You know, I actually have one that I'm throwing out of nowhere that Let's Samuel L. Jackson reminded me of. This is the TV edit of Snakes on a Plane. Enough is enough! I have had it with these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday plane. <laughs> Everybody strap in. Okay, so question I love is, how they do that on TV. That's so good. This monkey fighting snakes on, on this these Monday to Friday plane. Yeah. So, question, awful. real or fake? Because I don't know. I assume no, no, that it's real. No, that's how they do it in TV. Okay, okay. Okay. I don't know. I, oh, I you mean, is it real? Was it ever on TV real for real? Yeah, I mean, I like, did someone edit that and be like, hey, it's the uh, it's the TV version? Or is that actually the TV version? I haven't actually, I don't own a TV, I, so. I think that's some vigilante editing. That's, <laughs> I, would I would suspect. Yes, I would suspect. <laughs> yeah. All cool. right, how about our videos? What, what do we got, Chad? What you uh, we got this Windows oh, 8 yes. multitasking video. Let's check. I don't know why I love this video, but it, I hate it at the same time. It's so awful, yeah, but it's so good. Is it quiet? Oh, yeah, they're just talking low. So yeah. these guys are about There's to, a whole uh, bunch of weird Windows 8 videos out of Asia. Weird. Yeah, it's like, what is it? This is about Windows like 8 multitasking. Song. Okay. There's a ping pong there one. There's a makeup one. They're just very strange. Okay, so he's playing a piano, and, and you what's can hear some. Uh, oh, uh, he's uh, playing ping pong with his butt and the piano with his hands. Okay. Both are. Oh, they both are. Yeah. You think this is really happening? We played these on Windows Weekly a few weeks ago. There's actually a series of four or five of them, and we can't figure out. There's there's. We, I brought Tony Wang in because he's a Chinese speaker. <laughs> There's because it, it's some of it's Chinese, some of it's Korean, some of it's Japanese. It's just unclear. So it's just yeah, it's just it's general purpose, strange Asian ads. Okay, uh -huh. huh? They're not oh. showing them in the U.S. So would you buy a Windows 8 tablet? Because you can it lets you play this. ping pong with your with the paddle. You know your, what? I, I really I wanted to right be able message. to play the piano and play ping no, pong with my butt at not the for same us. time. It's not oh, for really? us. Assuming that that was CGI, those weren't real ping pong. And yeah. No, no, no. They're, no, there are people who can actually do that. <laughs> right. Oh. <laughs> they all had Windows 8 it, tablets. It's though. all about the mounting. Yeah. What, uh, what is, what oh. is what, this yeah. advertising lately? I, I just, I don't see how that relates to the average consumer. And they're like, oh, I'm going to go buy a uh, Windows 8 tablet. Thank you, Microsoft. Well, to me, what this points up is another mm -hmm. very good use of YouTube, which is not created, kind of created for YouTube, but mm -hmm. as a way for people to share weird stuff that they've found in other 
uh, sources. And a lot of what's on YouTube lately, a lot of what I see on YouTube lately is historic video. I just was watching, a, there's a whole channel of uh, old New York videos. Mm -hmm. 19, oh, yes. That 1933 that video of yeah. New York. It's beautiful. It's That's a good use of YouTube, in my opinion. Because, sure. but, it, but it doesn't see YouTube as a content creation channel. And I don't think Google likes this. This is the last thing they want because basically it's just using their bandwidth for free. They're freeloaders, but they but it but it's frankly a very good use for YouTube. I think. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, yeah, that's they, what most people think of YouTube as. I mean, they have a huge hill to climb. That's the problem. If they want, and this was the bet that they always made, is that if you go there for your cat videos, one day you'll go there for your TV videos. And, for your news. Your yeah, news for your news, for everything. For all, every, you know, you'll just go to YouTube for video, and and it, it won't matter if it's one type or another. And we, I don't know, there might be a little bit of backlash on my kids, type of video. My kids' school bans YouTube. You know, they block it on their filtering. Right. And I think, frankly, this is exactly the reason you shouldn't ban YouTube because the amount of historic stuff that's on here is fabulous. Absolutely. But Leo, here's the question. How do you find it? And that... That the discovery on YouTube is still some of the worst. Uh, like, how how would I find that great historical video? Well, they're and this is an, they're not going to promote that. No, and this is another yeah. thing that Google doesn't like. But right. really, what YouTube is being used as by I would say the majority of YouTube users is as a place to store video so they can then link to it as Ellen DeGeneres does from oh, their yeah. website or their Tumblog or their Twitter account. Right, they don't it's have, just they don't have to a repository. Free distribution. It, they don't have to make server, servers of their own or anything. They, yeah, it's genius. And, yeah. and so they're, they're not really content creators. They just, they just put their content there right. for free. Yeah, I don't think so once you've like learned about this, for instance, Old New York channel, then you subscribe to it, and you're going to see Old New York videos, and it's fabulous. Uh, uh, right. Awesome. You know, but that's not something that's going to make YouTube yeah. a lot of money. I mean, their, their bet is is you go to YouTube so much that, oh, the day that you see, oh, I could watch Fast and Furious 6, uh, I could just rent it right now for 3 bucks. You know, is that turnover ever going to happen? I doubt it. I, I don't think that you're going to get someone who went to YouTube to watch old New York videos for free is going to want to shell out $7 to watch well, or, or rent a movie. And as an example, I've been searching YouTube for old New York and have not been able to find it. But right. if I search the World Wide Web for old New York, I immediately find articles about this YouTube video pointing me right back to the YouTube channel. Interesting. Well, so, I mean, YouTube is, what, the second largest search engine? I mean, oh, yeah. and I think the third Absolutely. is Amazon. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, they, they definitely have a, a issue. And on top of that, the videos, you can't parse videos like you can parse a web page or links. You know, no, you but, can't. Go ahead. Oh, no, I mean, I think the interesting thing, point, though, about the old New York videos are uh, that's something you want to watch on a big screen. You're gonna watch that on, you know, your your laptop screen or uh, even your 32-inch uh, monitor screen or whatever larger format you have. Uh, whereas Jenna Marbles, um, Ray William Johnson, a great lot for of mobile. successful people, you want to watch them on your, your great cell phone. for mobile. Yep, they're great for mobile. They're I great agree. for tablets. I agree. So it's like you you wouldn't be wanting to watch the old New York video on your your uh, cell phone. You want to take that to a larger screen and really appreciate it. And so it's kind of I think the other kind of identity crisis of YouTube is you have the most popular content on YouTube from PewDiePie to, to Jenna Marbles being content that is really um, best consumed on mobile platforms, on, on cell phones, on tablets, and uh, the content that would be best for a large television format like Old New York, um, uh, stuff that's like CSI is generally not as successful. Sometimes there are exceptions like Freddie Wong, but for the most part, uh, it's stuff that's best consumed uh, on a small screen. Well, this was published a week ago and has 724,000 views. And all of those, by the way, none of those come from YouTube. They're all generated by the outside, by the Huffington Post and right. New York Daily News. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and Absolutely. so what do you think YouTube, what do you think Google slash YouTube wants as opposed to what it's getting? I mean, they... Do they, they want they mobile want, video, Tay? Well, I don't know. You know what? Uh, sorry. Uh, they want advertisers. And this sort of footage, if they can be able to parse that this is clean and family friendly, and then they could put advertisements on the side of it, they'd be happy, in my opinion. No, you're wrong. They can't make enough money on it. I think mobile is 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 it. I mean, you look at these even developing nations or or or, or more developed or as developed, excuse me, like in China or Japan. Everybody's carrying around a cell phone. India. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it mobile is the next frontier and if they crack mobile 
it's that is the next ca uh, cash cow. I just firmly believe that. So we yeah. we need to make our content for mobile. The problem yeah. is, how do you get people to uh, invest in in the ads, or does that ad pl platform work with well, pre rolls? No, I, I completely I completely agree with uh, with what you're saying, Lamar. I think the real crisis is that you have this whole industry uh, in Hollywood built around creating content for. Uh, the television for you know the big screen absolutely and and so you know you're spending 200 million dollars to make a movie five million dollars an episode for a show like csi then jenna marbles comes along with the webcam on her macbook and she looks just as good as csi on a cell phone as you know a show spending five million dollars an episode and she's more authentic and she has shorter episodes and you know she's she's more hip to what that new medium is so it's kind of this question of where is the capital in entertainment invested in these large, bulky consumption formats? Uh, what's going to happen? Is there going to be a, a divestment, an exodus from creating content for large formats and, and rushing to mobile or making sure that um, uh, stuff like The Walking Dead and stuff that has a huge um, presence in a large screen is also stuff that really appeals to cell phone consumers. But what did YouTube push in the new fronts? If you want to know what YouTube's up to, look at the new fronts, right? Because this is where YouTube, in effect, says, "Here's our strategy. This is this is where they go to the advertisers. They do. It's a it's their version of the uh, upfront that broadcast media does. They uh, sell the begin at the beginning of the year. They sell their new shows, mm -hmm. and they say, okay, you want to buy ad time on these. And what did they push on the new fronts at YouTube? They push stars. They push YouTube stars, big time, right? They see. I think they see their future uh, as personality driven. Now, I mean, well, it changes now, every six now, months. By the way, I don't. I don't think they have a coherent they, strategy. They actually, they actually admitted they made a mistake in going after celebrities right. on TV. Yeah. It's like, oh, we realize we should be going after <laughs> YouTube home stars. I'm like, homegrown Duh. stars. Yep. They, they 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 put a million. What is it? A a million dollars or two million dollars? Three hundred million. A hundred channels. Yeah. And a hundred channel and and they got nothing back except. Only ones that were successful, for the most part, were the ones who were already YouTubers, SourceFed, yeah. right? Um, yeah. a, a few, a few other uh, yeah. the, uh, the Vlog Brothers who were yeah, doing like their real, stuff. Real, real celebrity did not transfer. You know, everyone no? loves Shaquille. Everyone loves Shaquille O'Neal, but nobody but watches nobody, him on YouTube. Nobody watches his, his uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, so at the New Friends t this year, they, which was just a month ago, it was all about Phil DeFranco and the and the Jenna Marbles and the celebrity, the YouTube celebrities, and mm -hmm. I think that's smart. Yep, exactly. But that's the that's the that's the plan this year. It'll be different yeah. next year because they haven't cracked it yet. I don't think they've cracked it yet. Right. And yeah. the reason I said you're wrong, Chad, is because uh, you know I'm looking at this 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 New York video is from the Romano archives, whose white whose website by the way is down because they use too much bandwidth. Huh. So YouTube, you it's all about free bandwidth, and right. this is exactly what YouTube doesn't want. They can put ads on it; it's too expensive for them. They can't put an, they can't make enough money in it. What they need to do, I think, and what they want to do is sell uh, pre more premium priced ads to advertisers with when they can say this is a specific demographic this is Jenna Marbles this is where you're going to make this is we're going to sell this to you i think they realize they cannot sell the run a schedule the ROS style ads because they just don't make enough they can't make enough money and that's a good point be uh, because also those ads will only show up if the youtube cre uh, the person who uploaded the video decides to put them up right they could use the bandwidth for absolutely free and decide yeah. not to monetize those videos. And for an archive, that's what they're going to do. Yeah. Um, so that's it, also, yeah, very good point. That's such, that's such a huge savings for them to be able to do that, too. So On top of that, I, they get yeah. extra things like being able to play videos on mobile or iPads where right. Flash can't play. Like, right. if they had made their own Flash player and right. hosted it all, you you oh get my. amazing. I mean, you get a uh, So anyone there's who's, a public service that YouTube is doing, Well, too, right. right. I mean, I would say anyone who needs to yeah. put videos up online, put them on YouTube. It sure. doesn't make any sense to put them it's anywhere else. It's a good deal right now. Right. Yeah. And anybody who's doing any any else uh, anywhere else is just they doing it out of spite. I was watching something on yeah. That's Pando, why I want to move all our Pando videos Daily. to Vimeo. Yeah, Pando oh. Daily, and they, they were using their own player, and that's like you know, and it was crap. It was crappy. It was it was breaking. Vimeo's good like, though, right? Oh yeah, Vimeo's a, good, Vimeo's a good site. I'm moving everything to Vimeo because YouTube then, keeps screwing us. Frankly, are you being serious? Or are you? No. Well, I oh. well, nobody will <laughs> let me, but I want to. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I went to Lisa. I said, "Can we move everything off of uh, YouTube?" She said, "No, please, no." <laughs> <laughs> so I'm stuck. But I would no. if it were up to me. Uh, you know, you know me. I, I I hold a grudge. 
Well, I mean, YouTube is also uh, very much kind of this mystery. They keep a lot of the operation right. of the YouTube website mysterious. Um, yes, there are do. a lot of statistics they could publish about exactly how your content syndicates on the site. They don't want in that. terms they don't of want us what to know the pages that. are, yeah. what the impressions are, and what. I, so they don't want us to know that. So it's kind of like this Rube Goldberg machine, right. and that's part of the frustration that a lot of people, especially people who are struggling to grow an audience, have with YouTube. It's like, tell me when my subscribers log on to the site. Tell me nope. how many impressions the video actually gets when it nope. syndicates through the mechanism of the site. And it's just this man behind the curtain right. mystery that um, YouTube isn't really willing to disclose. Exactly. Exactly. So, Tay, you, you've been awesome, and we're going to make you now give us a tip even though you gave us hundreds already. Oh. Um, but but I, what, I, what I want you to do is fo focus the, the, the tip on, you know, either the, the viewer or as a, as a creator. I don't know. I know you prepared this. I don't know where you're going to come from, but I'm your insights have been amazing today. And so thank you for that just ahead of time. But well, what final tip could you give us for YouTube? Of, do you want like a mechanical tip in terms of just like something? You else? were prepped for this, sir. <laughs> I, oh my God! No, this is coming you know off that, on the fly. You know I that tip we. You know that tip. I told you to. <laughs> you know the one we talked about, Tay. You know, you know the one that one. Yeah, it, uh, make, make, whatever you want. Come off the fly. You're you've been on here long enough. You can figure it out. You got ten uh, seconds. <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, I still believe in SEO. I still believe in, in in reviewing current events and stuff that is still big in search, and that you know that that's not as dominant a way to grow your audience as it used to be. But definitely doing movie reviews, stuff that's popular, uh, like Game of Thrones and whatnot, trying to get in that SEO. And also, um, this is something Freddie Wong uh, is very big on: is whatever your specific type of content is, find a community that is into that type of content. Find a subreddit, find a website, find a forum, find a, a, a niche that you can promote that particular brand of content to. And then they'll do a lot of the work of promoting it and sharing it on Facebook and, and being engaged. So it's kind of like um, building uh, Chris Brillo's uh, A Thousand Active Fans, um, where he wrote an article that everyone is really trying to get a thousand people to just share everything, retweet everything, um, pass it along. And so um, really finding a, a specific niche community that's active and engaged um, that ties in with your videos is also a great suggestion. Yeah, that's a very I good think one. it's the only suggestion. I think you yep. nailed it. Yep. And that this, was a this, great is on the fly. this is from a guy who yeah. knows <laughs> you don't get 91 million views unless you've, uh, unless you've got those people doing that for you. Right. Yep. Absolutely. And it keeps you, and it also keeps you going on those days when you're down. Right. Almost definitely. I mean, I think YouTube becomes something that, you know, I always say content creates the person you want to be. Yeah, there you where, go. Where you, like you, you create content on YouTube to create the life you want to live and create the person you want to live. And I think, honestly, people are often motivated uh, in that regard beyond traffic. I mean, you look at some successful YouTubers, these people don't really ever have to work again or or keep putting content out there at the rate they do it. But they're passionate about it because they they love living that life and what it does to them as a person. So content really creates the person you want to be. That's beautiful. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Says Tay Zondaisy drives off in his Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been working on in the in the past uh, few months that we can uh, send people to to check out what you're doing now? Uh, always putting stuff on my YouTube channel. I'm in a little bit of a hiatus, but. Uh, um, oh gosh, you know the uh, the oh, comedy. Oh, what is this? Out of <laughs> what what is this video? Oh my God! Oh, don't play oh, that. Let, let, oh. Let's go skip through a little bit. Wait, should we? Uh, go up oh, to the yes. Lamar section. Is whoa, whoa, it, whoa! Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Crazy! Oh no, that, that's not on my channel now. You've got that? a sunburn. Oh, wow. oh no, uh -oh. that's your channel. Put, put the audio <laughs> on. I want to hear this. Is that on YouTube? Oh, put that on. Oh. Was this your street performance when you were younger? Is this how you made living when you were younger? Oh, this is eating baby food. It's, it's, yeah. Multiple YouTube yeah. challenges. I was supposed to be at this, and I, I got sick. I couldn't make it. So, so like, there's all different YouTube let's, let's channels. There's different YouTubers in the background. Eating doing, baby food. Doing, yeah, if, you could, if you could skip to the, the glorious milk part, that would be, that'd be yeah. awesome. We, we have to leave with that taste. Chocolate barf. I ate some baby food and then 
this? Oh, this part? Oh, no. No, no, no don't mix orange juice and milk. No. No, don't mix orange juice and milk. No. Oh, no, it looks what like... What is that? What is, is that, that an egg? Right. Oh, you're making a... Uh, yeah, that's a hangover cure. Keep going, keep going. It gets yeah, better. Tell me when to stop, tell me when to stop. What's the, what are you wearing around your neck? It's a bib. It's a, a bib. rubber bib? It's a bib, so I don't... Uh... Oh, my gosh! <laughs> oh, my gosh! Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I that think you, wasn't me. That YouTube was did this. <laughs> that was some other like, wow. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, that was the Taze on Day stunt up. Wow. <laughs> Very good. Well, uh, everyone should go there and subscribe immediately. <laughs> immediately. That's the kind of stuff you see. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Lamar, if you're still available, if you're still here with us, what have you been doing the last week here? Oh my God. Um, okay, so I. <laughs> I, I did a well, yeah. Last week I did a very uh, rude interview with my with one of my friends, which was turned out to be a, a pretty interesting video. It was all it was all in fun, but yeah, I I was very very rude to him, and uh, that was that was. I think that's kind of the only big highlight. However, next week, which is tomorrow, I plan to go on a five. I listened to Leo finally. I plan to go on a five. Video streak. Are you going to do a, a cleanse? Uh -oh. A cleanse? Five you're doing day, that? Five day <laughs> finally. Bender of videos. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's going to be really good topics. Um, I will be revealing my new phone that I'm using now, oh. probably on Wednesday, because a lot of people have been asking what I'm using and I've been ignoring them uh, because I've been waiting for this video. See, so I give that see. crap away. I should really be holding on to that, huh? Oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, so you can see that. <laughs> and also this week, um, I'm going to Vlogger Fair, and that's Chris. Oh, that's fun! Yeah, uh, thing that's happening. So I'll be I'll be on on the road uh, Thursday through Monday for that. And uh, yeah, Chris, Pro I think it's going to be a great event. You know, he was on a couple weeks ago, and, and um, it's 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 going to be a fun week. So I look forward to it. What about you, Chad? What are you doing? Well, this last week I uploaded another vlog. It's uh, the second vlog in the new reboot of making videos again I for this show. I watched it. It was really good in your kitchen, dude. Yeah, yeah. it is. I, I I I literally had to clean up my kitchen just to make this this vlog because my house is a mess. But uh, it talks about things like uh, my hair, as you can see right there, and um, uh, a moment in life where I realize that you know I'm I'm mortal, and and I ask kind of the community to jump in with their own stories about. Um, situations in your life that really kind of change your outlook on the rest of your life. Um, I talked about the first time that I ever passed out on, you know, not not from being drunk, but from, uh, mm -hmm. from yeah, from uh, uh, dehydration mm -hmm. and how that really changed my perspective <laughs> on life. Not drinking enough. Not drinking enough. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And so I asked people to kind of pitch in and share their own stories. And uh, that's what I did this last week. And you want to know what I did? What's what? that? I watched Tasting uh, Call Me Maybe. Boy, that was oh. fun. What a good version of this. Can you get my audio at all? No. Damn. That's perfect. That's just how it okay. should be. Oh, call me, maybe. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Woo! Golly. Audio's working great. <laughs> There's the audio right there. Hey. Call me, maybe. One thing we did not mention, June 6th is when they turn on the one channel for everyone. So if you have not Like guys, it or not. It, huh? Like it or not. Oh, yeah, like it or not. They said they're nice. I guess they are. So like it or not, so get your designs ready because it's coming. And I think it's, it'll be a, a nice quick burst of new subscribers. I think uh, all channels are going to benefit, at least initially, because you, you'll see all these subscribe subscribe everywhere. Uh, and I, I, I think I think it'll be good for us I think uh, so. as, far, as far as discovery. I look forward to it. Cool. Cool, cool. Yeah. Thank right. you, uh, Mr. Lamar Wilson. Thank you, Chad. And thanks Thank especially you. to our very special guest, Tay Zonday. Yes. It's been really great yeah. meeting you, Tay. Please huge, subscribe to him. Huge fan. Subscribe. Tayface.com or YouTube.com slash T-A-Y-Z-A-N-D-O-Z-O-N-D-A-Y. I've completely messed it up now. <laughs> <laughs> you can figure it out. Just it's search search for Chocolate Rain. <laughs> thank you, Tay. <laughs> or call me, me maybe. <laughs> and uh, thank you for joining us. We do this week in YouTube right after the radio show, right before Twit, every Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2100, I'm sorry, 2200 UTC on twit.tv. Please join us live, if not, on demand audio and video available everywhere except YouTube, where we are still blocked. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time <laughs> on This Week in Sons of Bitches. <laughs>